Okay, we are recording. Hello, Jake. How's it going? Hey, Rafi. How are you? Good. Thanks for doing this with me. So we are two um, two people who love Pokemon collectibles and thought we'd have a discussion, share some of our insights with the bigger community, especially during a time when things are both so crazy, both for the world and for, for Pokemon and, and collectibles in general. Um, so that'd be fun just to introduce ourselves. What is our background? Why are we interested in this? Why are we doing this? Jake, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. My name's uh, Jake, uh, and uh, I started um, collecting Pokemon when I was a kid and absolutely loved them. Uh, every week I would get like one pack and would be so excited to open that pack and hope that I would get a, 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 foil, a hollow foil card that I could add to my collection and show off uh, to my friends. And um, about two years ago now, uh, I found... Uh, my old Pokemon card collection and I like immediately felt that nostalgia and that excitement that I felt when I was a kid and so I um, I was also interested do these cards have value you know what are these cards doing these days because I'm also <laughs> always interested in, in investing in finance um, and uh, you know thought maybe I would sell them so I, I looked up uh, the started looking up some of the values online and learning about graded cards um, and uh, how to value Pokemon cards and uh, saw that they were worth quite a bit of money and that uh, the cards that I had kept were in, were in pretty good condition. So, um, so I started selling some and then realized that I love them so much and that now as an adult uh, who has a job and, and some income and, and uh, can use you know, eBay and the internet to get anything that we desire, um, that I could start rebuying uh, and recollecting some of the cards that I either never had as a kid or get a card in first edition that I, that I um, never had as a kid. And, and that was so fun and exciting. And uh, that led to me then meeting other people who were interested uh, and realizing that there's a, uh, there's a huge uh, Pokemon adult <laughs> card collecting community and and uh, that has a similar experience you know as me. so that's how I got into it how about you Rafi what's your relationship with Pokemon? I think well our story is very similar I think it's similar for so many people who are yeah. our age you know like growing up in like the 90s um that I collected so I, I was really into this card game first called the Star Wars CCG by Decipher that was like in the mid 90s I played that mm -hmm. when I was like six years old I had no clue how to play the game correctly just collected the cards um, my family moved away internationally and when we came back to America, Pokemon was all the rage. And I still remember like everyone else having all the cards and I desperately wanted them. And I think as a result, I got into it for like much longer than most people. For most people it was a fad, but for me it was just like, this was like my mark of like being an American again um, and sort of showing up, which is ironic because I know it's Japanese. But I was really into Pokemon for a while. Then I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and then eventually got into Magic the Gathering. And so sort of hit all the big ones throughout my childhood. And then the process of rediscovering them as an adult was so similar where it's like, I dug up my old collection. So it started with magic. Um, I dug up my old collection and I was like, hey, these are actually worth a lot right now. Let me try to sell them. And through the process of selling them, I was looking up all the cards and reading sort of all like about all the new cards and all the market and, and the, the current metagame. And I just got so into it again that I ended up using all the money I earned from selling my cards to just buy new cards and start playing again. Um, yeah. Literally the exact same thing happened to me a couple of years later with Legos, where I got into like like trying to sell my Legos, but then buying even more new sets and then eventually Pokemon too. And I think out of, out of all of them, Pokemon was one that sort of was like, nearest and dearest to my heart um yes. so i'm definitely not as as you know serious of like a buyer and seller like investor as jake is and that's kind of why i, I want to be like asking most of the questions today because so from my point of view like one of one of the things i've done in my career is i started a, a tool to teach people personal finance i i worked at a company called vanguard i worked in consulting and so i learned a lot about you know trying to give people like like just basic tips on managing their money, um, including investments. And for me, like all this stuff always felt like a hobby, right? Like I wouldn't put like my real retirement savings in, in anything collectible. I, I probably still wouldn't. Um, but it was really interesting to like talk to Jake and how much he's gotten into it. And the fact that you, you put so much of, of, of what you have into Pokemon um, makes me sort of reconsider that. And, and I thought it'd be really cool that as, as a way just to give information to people who are considering doing something similar. Um, so I guess that, that leads me to the first question, which is like, is Pokemon a good investment? Should people consider doing what you've done? Um, so 
I think that Pokemon is um, can definitely make money in Pokemon, uh, both in the short term and in the long term. Um, when we're comparing it to other uh, asset classes, uh, uh, Pokemon is um, still very young and very speculative. And what that means is that there, there are a lot of people, um, there are not prices that have been set for many, many years, like you might see in other, other um, even other collectibles, even, even collectibles such as Magic the Gathering is still very speculative, but even that has, has, more, has a little bit more years than Pokemon, but sports cards, um, things like, uh, older things like, like buying first edition books, um, coins and currency, these, these mark art, the art market, these market, these, these are all assets that don't, uh, don't produce anything, don't have a function, they're, they're collected and enjoyed and, and bought because people, people love them, you know love looking at them, uh, enjoy them. Uh, but um, the market is so new and is moving all over the place. And, and right now in particular, it's, it's a, a crazy time in the Pokemon market. The market has been fairly stable, uh, moving most cards moving slightly upwards for the past uh, two years or so. Um, but, um, but in the, in, and we'll talk, we'll continue to talk about this, I'm sure. But, um, but recently there's been a huge, uh, explosion and lots of cards that were that were going up five, ten, twenty five, a hundred dollars are now going up a thousand dollars, going up ten thousand dollars, you know, in in the matter of a month. So going back to is Pokemon investable? So um, I think that the the hobby is made up of uh, investors, uh, collectors, and flippers, and I think a lot of people are some, a combination, honestly, of the three of those. You certainly don't have to be just one. Uh, and often it's actually fun to, to do each of those things, I think. Uh, and, and you can even build your own collection by, by flipping some cards or buying some cards that you think are undervalued or, you, or you know, holding them for a few months and selling them. Um, uh, I think you and I both have, have done that and been, been involved in that. Um, but our goals are also to be collectors and we, we love the cards and there are certain cards we go after and we want to collect. And then we also hope, I think, as most collectors would, that, that your collection will go up in value over the years. Yeah. And, and, and that's and exactly how I see it too, is like, it's something that brings me joy that, that usually appreciates in value. Obviously we don't know, like the entire Pokemon franchise could collapse, you know, but, mm -hmm. but like, I never feel as bad like making an expensive purchase, whether it's for a Pokemon card or a Lego set, because I know that like worst case, if I get bored of it or I don't want you more, I can just sell it and recoup most of what I spent, if not make a profit from it. Yeah. 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 And I, I think that, you know, the way that I view it is Pokemon is a huge company and there's a lot of money. And in, in, if you want to go up and look, I don't know the exact stats, but but it's, oh, I'll look at some of the meantime while you're talking about the size of the franchise. Yeah. Yeah, but the size of the fr it's a humongous franchise. There is a huge amount of popularity in in Pokemon cards, but also uh, the the toys, the plushes, the movies, the memorabilia. Um, yeah. It's huge. I'm going to share my screen right now. Can you see this? Absolutely. This is uh, a yes. This is a thing that you told me about. So that this company, Title Max, uh, valued the different brands, media brands. And this blew my mind. I had no idea. Yeah. Pokemon is the biggest brand in terms of, of, of its gross, like how much revenue it's earned over time. Yeah. Obviously, the majority of all these brands is merchandise, but Pokemon is this huge chunk here of trading cards also. But like, it's crazy. It's bigger than Star Wars, which surprised me. Um, bigger than like the Marvel Universe, which is all the way down here in Harry Potter. I didn't know Hello Kitty or like Winnie the Pooh were so big. But So when you're thinking about investing, it's, it's good to, to know that there's a lot of people and a lot of money that's interested in that hobby and is being spent on things related to that hobby. Um, I think that uh, when you talk to, if any of you have kids out there, if you talk to your kids, um, Pokemon is still, the, the card game is still collected to this day. Um, the modern sets are, are huge right now and are selling out all over the place. Um, for people who know a lot about Pokemon, I'm sure they've heard of like Hidden Fates and these big successes that Pokemon has had recently. Um, and so the, the, uh, the interest in the market will probably last 
um, like these kids will, will probably a certain, maybe a small portion of them, but, but, a, but a portion of them uh, will be interested probably in the vintage cards when they grow up and, and right. And that's something I think Charizard, that first Blastoise, that first, or, or whatever they're interested, whatever their favorite Pokemon are, that first requires a, you know. Yeah, and that's something I think separates Pokemon from a lot of other franchises. You mentioned this to me before, like, there are a lot of collectibles now that are getting really big because it's the age that, like, for us, we were big on it as kids, we're rediscovering it now as adults, and we have the money to spend on it, or at least to risk on it. Um, but if nobody is continuing the hobby right now, if there's no next generation, what happens when our generation starts to get old and like needs to sell it off for retirement or like one day dies out, right? And if there are kids yeah. today who are just as into Pokemon as we were when we were kids, which which until I found out about this five years ago, it totally blew my mind. I had no idea that it was still like a big thing. Um, but it is, right? There's potentially even more people in this generation who are playing Pokemon than when we were. Um, they're going to keep it going for a long time. Yeah. And so if we think of this as sort of like, you know, in the short term, and the reason that I really viewed this as, um, you know, two years ago when I got into it as there's probably, there's so, there seemed to be so much room to, to grow in this hobby and these card, the card values to grow um, it was because my, my theory, you know, and a lot of people I think uh, who've been collecting both believe this. And I think it's showing to be true right now or the, the start of it is that um, the people who grew up with it are now getting into their, you know, early 30s, mid to, mid to late 20s, and they're starting to have more disposable income. And so with more of that disposable income, uh, some of these cards that maybe were out of reach at some point and were $1,000 and you had, you know, let's say 100 buyers for that card, and you know, now you're having thousands of buyers for that, for that same card or looking for that same card, which drastically drives the, the price up, right? Mm -hmm. All this right. is supply and demand at the end of the day. Which leads me uh, to, I think, the biggest question I want to ask you, it's sort of the meat of our topic today, which is like, what is going on with the market? And I'll, I'll tell you like why it's confusing to me, and then I want to hear your theory. Like why it's confusing to me is that obviously everyone's been following what's been going on with coronavirus and economic response. Like it seemed like we were going to enter basically economists are saying the biggest recession since the Great Depression, maybe even bigger than that. Um, but what happened, the government's response is basically to, to do like stimulus spending, right? So like the Fed is, is putting out money, Congress is authorizing more money. And so to me, my, my personal economic take is it's sort of delaying the onset of the recession. So I would have expected that this is a time when people are just like selling off their collections, like they're losing their jobs, like 20 something or 30 something million Americans have filed for unemployment just in the last few weeks. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's like a terrible economic situation. But the silver lining in it for me was that like, at least, at least I got to have fun with Pokemon and, and, and Star Wars cards again, because they're not going to be expensive. People are going to be selling off their collections, you know, on the cheap yeah. to, to keep things going. A lot and of people felt that way. And that's a total opposite of what's been happening. You know, maybe it's a stimulus money or something else, but like prices have just like, for some things have been like doubling, as you said, multiplying 10 times. Like, yeah. why is that happening when we are potentially entering the biggest recession since the Great Depression? Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's definitely not just the stimulus money because cards that are valued at way more than, than, the, <laughs> than the stimulus price, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars are- Can you give me an example? So there are a number of um, world's promo uh, finalists, champion cards. There's been movement on those. Those have been, been selling and coming off of eBay. Um, those go for anywhere between, depending on the year. Uh, and there's a lot to talk about in terms of breaking down and we can do these in, in further videos. Yeah. Yeah. But, One time we'll focus on just that category. Yeah, card specifically. Exactly. But, um, but there's, you know, these ungraded copies are going for anywhere between, you know, two and $10,000, depending on the year right now. Um, your early, your, your, your sort of vintage Japanese trophy cards, um, uh, uh, and your, you're they're they're not in the in the community people don't really know exactly what to call a trophy card but things like tropical wind which isn't exactly a trophy card but um but it's sort of in the trophy card uh price range thing you know going for over ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars in psa 10 even more it's probably a lot more than that right now i'd probably value that card more at thirty to forty thousand dollars in psa 10 only three in the world and it's the first ever um uh, card that was given out at, at these world Pokemon World Championships that first year. Um, you know, I think there are 11 nines or 12 nines. You know, the populations can sometimes change, but um, something in, in there. Uh, and uh, I actually have, have one of those cards um, if, uh, if you guys want to see it. 
I could yeah, I would love to. So towards the end of this, we're gonna do sorry, we're gonna do some fun collection little segments. Uh -huh. We're gonna see take a peek at Jake's collection, which is like yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you're like one of the top card collectors in the world, or you're like getting close to that right now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's we're it's we're sitting with the legend. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty crazy, <laughs> and when I get really into something, you know, I've been spending many hours, you know, on on this, including working my my normal job, um, uh, because I I love it and and I'm really interested in it, and uh, uh, and I and I really think it's it's investable. And you know, going back to your question of of I think why uh, uh, are things exploding? Why are things exploding right now? Um, so it's not just that that uh, that check. Um, because these we're seeing these prices grow everywhere. I think a lot of people are at home uh, looking on eBay. I think that there's a lot of excitement and hype right now around these cards. Uh, I think people there's a there in collectibles there's a there's an intense fear of missing out that you don't have in the stock market. Now you do have you have in the stock market you have a feeling of I'm going to miss out on price. This is a good, this stock is a good investment. I want to put my money in the stock market, right? Because I believe the stock market will go up eight to 12% a year and I'll, I'll make it a solid return over time. So I'm going to put my money in some blue chip stocks. Um, but there's a, there's not a, there's not a feeling of like, if I don't buy this company now, I literally will not be able to get this company in the future or yeah. the company is going to go up a hundred times, right? In, in the course of a few months and I'll never get it. And so I think you're seeing a lot of new people join the hobby right now. And these people, they really love specific cards from their childhood. They really want to collect. And I think that there's so many of them flooding the market right now and are also home looking at auctions, looking at eBay constantly. So many eyes on these things and eyes on these new prices that these new prices points, which are sometimes 10 times the, you know, even 50 times in, in really strange cases. And there might be some chill bidding and some other things going on there that we could talk about. But, um, you know, these crazy new prices being set and then they're hit. The, someone pays a new high price for a card and then five more people pay that next price or even higher in the next week. And that's what we've been sort of seeing with a number of, of and I should be careful here, but the, the vintage, we're really talking about the Watsi, the Wizards of the Coast, um, vintage hollows and those sorts of things right now. You are seeing movement on specific on some specific modern cards and Charizard cards and you know ultra rare shiny you know cards. Um, whatever whatever their newest version of the ultra rare is like yeah, super exactly. rainbow gold. <laughs> yeah, shiny. with like a texture and different <laughs> colors and you know and I actually really I like those cards and do. Me too. Them. Me too. I love them. I'm not hating on it, but it is, you know. Um, but but those cards are. Uh, much, much more available right now and in the future. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many of them that are being created. Yeah. And like, you, oh, excuse me, sorry. Well, well, I think, I mean, what you said sounds so right to me as a, as a reason for all this, right? That like people are home, a lot of them may have less to do because they're not working as much. Or when you're working from home, you have more time to distract yourself. Um, and it's just fun to peruse eBay. And after a while, you start getting that FOMO, right? You're like, I've wanted to buy yeah. this card since I was a kid. I always thought I could wait until whenever but now the prices are going up is now the right time to pull the trigger. And like, yeah, as one example, we were talking about this before, but um, Jake and I recently got some of our cards graded and I had this one from a kid. So it's a first edition Raikou hollow from Neo Revelations um, that ended up coming back in nine, which is exciting. Right. And, and at the time it was worth maybe like 150, maybe $200. Um, and I was like, I'll just list it for 300 and see what happens. And someone bought it at that price. And I was messaging with it with the buyer is really nice guy, but he's just like, I don't really like collect. I'm just getting back into this as a card I've always wanted. Like I saved up money in order I could buy it. And and I guess your theory is there's a lot more of those people now. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are a lot of those people, you know, and I think if you look at the population of these cards, um, there are a lot of these cards that have under there, there are some of these cards that have under 30, you know, even under 15 population in, 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 in the, in the PSA 10. Could you give some examples? Let me, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to pull up this website that you, you recommended to me. Um, sure. So this is. So this is, yeah, this Pokemon is price. Uh, com. Pokemon price, which I highly recommend. Um, now it's difficult right now because prices are skyrocketing so much. This website is uh, falling behind a little bit on some of the, the, the new record prices. But yeah. I think soon it will have the new record prices. So some of these are the old prices. 
Um, so but yeah, you can go to sets here and you can look up sort of any set. So a lot of the cards that have the lowest pop, some of these Neo sets in particular mm -hmm. have extremely Literally like low. Neo Revelation as an example. Yeah. So like if you want to look at like the Blissey here, mm -hmm. which which has extremely low population, we're talking about 10 PSA 10, 10 cards in the world, only 142 PSA 9 cards here. Um, so this $1,500 price tag is extremely outdated. I would buy oh, really? let's, let's $1,500 take a look. in a heartbeat. <laughs> so Neo Genesis, <laughs> many Blissey, people. Yeah. First edition, PSA. There probably are going to be none. So you have to put PSA 10. And they're going to be none because they're just sort of never going to be able to start for sale. So they're showing me some more things, but if I go to sold I think items. There was a BGS 9.5 available if you want to type that one in and we can see. I think that was going for about eight to 9,000. And that looked like a nine to be not a 10. So I would not recommend buying that card. Am I so misspelling Blissey? So these are sold listings. Can we look at... Um, oh, current ones? Yeah. Just to see what, they're, what it's going for, right? Or what someone's trying to get. I wonder why... Let me take out first edition. Oh, so it's not Genesis, it's Revelation. That was why. Oh, uh, whoops. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Okay, so here's a 9.5 BGS for 2,500. So if we take a look at this card and we look at the subgrades, which you see that the corners have a nine, which means almost 100% this card will not get a PSA 10. It would get a PSA 9. It, it would get a PSA 9. And we can take a look at the, at the, at the pictures if we want here to look closer. But we're talking really about this person probably selling a strong PSA 9, trying to sell for $2,500. Yeah. And, um, and so now, now that I got the, I'm not getting the set wrong. Let's see if we have any sold listings under PSA. Yeah, but we can even look at lower, like here's an 8.5 unlimited, not first edition, PSA 7 for 40. You know, honestly, not that, not, you know, in the current market, that's not that high. That's not that crazy with, yeah. with the movement we've been seeing. The famous, the card right now that's really moving the most is called T17. It's this ty Typhlosion. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if people will list it like that or this guy did. So that's a Japanese version. Typhlosion 17. Yeah, it's part of the, uh, the Neo Genesis set, which was the first, the first Neo set. So this and is PSA 8 first edition sold for $1,500 yeah, years ago. Yeah, so uh, I've heard that there are private offers on this card for well well over ten thousand let me put it that way and what are they listed for, for right now thousand for psa 10. private offers meaning people who haven't listed on ebay yeah so people people yeah selling this, straight over things like e4 or... wow that's crazy yeah um so i want to before we get to some more of the, the fun stuff i want us sure. to do um <laughs> What what are let, let's each spend a couple of minutes making some predictions. What's going to happen to the market over the next six months, one year, longer than that? What do you think? Whew. So this is probably this is such a hard time to predict to give any predictions. I mean, my personal what I'm personally doing is I am still slowly buying, and I'm looking at what cards are kind of racing up and where all the hype is, and I'm actually trying to buy elsewhere. At cards that I feel like haven't really moved with the trend. My general feeling is that people seem to follow a pattern in this hobby. That first they go back to the cards that they had as a kid. Okay, those are the ones they buy first. So right now you might be having people coming into the hobby that actually started in the Neo sets because it's, it's you know, we started or at least I started. I think you actually might have started in the Neo. I started sets. closer to Neo. Yeah, like yeah. Neo was when I was getting really big into it. Um, but I started, and I think a lot of people, I'm 31 now, and I think a lot of people in that range started with the base set. And so the base set was the most popular. Everyone came in and bought the base set. Ba the base set has always been the most valuable set cards in, 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 in the Pokemon hobby since its establishment. Um, there are a few chase cards in PSA 10 that, that go for quite a bit higher than any card except for the Charizard uh, in, in, um, in that base set. But overall, the base set has been sort of the, um, uh, the base or the, the, of the price points where, where you're kind of looking for movement in that, and that's kind of moved everything up. Now I think you're actually getting people coming in who might care, who might like the Neo sets more, who might have grown up with those who feel stronger attachment to those. So that's why you're seeing the Neo sets go up so much. You know, a, a month or two ago, you were seeing Jim Challenge. Gym Heroes, Rocket, Jungle, Fossil, 
these the sort of you know, jungle and fossil with a, with a second group of sets and then you had rocket and the gym sets and then some of the less popular sets like base two i know you like base two <laughs> and poor man's um, base set the poor man's <laughs> base set um and uh and legendary uh collection set which has People have different opinions on some people Someone don't like it. Vomited <laughs> fireworks all over those cards. Yeah, yeah. Some people love them. Some people are like, this is annoying because <laughs> we've got these cards already like three times <laughs> at this point, some of these cards. Um, but um, but yeah, so so my prediction would be that it's harder to determine how many of these new people are in the hobby right now. So my current strategy is I'm going to continue, I'm going to try and buy things that I think these people are going to move to. So they're going to start with what they came in the hobby with, as I was saying, then after they start, after they start, after they love that, if they still have money and still have interest and that piques their interest, they're going to go to the next thing they collected. And then the next thing, then they're going to learn about vintage Japanese and they're going to fall in love with those because those have different art and art that they've never seen before. And, and you can only get that art, you can only get that specific card if you get it in Japanese. Then they're going to find out that there are trophy cards, that there are world promo cards. That there I think are... each step of the funnel gets smaller, right? Like you might have a ton of people who, are, who start out with what they wanted from childhood. And then as they get deeper and deeper, you know, more and more people sort of fall off. I think that's true, but you actually see the same movement in some of the, in the vintage Japanese right now that you're seeing in some of these English cards. Mm -hmm. Because I think that there are so, there are enough people right now in the hobby that everything is getting pushed. So even if there are definitely less people, those Japanese cards were already at a lower price. And so you're seeing an even distribution of, 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 of rising prices for some of these things, in part because a lot of those people that got in the hobby and now finished collecting their Neo and, and they are now moving to that vintage shop. And it's, it's, it's one of those insidious things about lot. collecting that it's like you think you have a goal and once you reach yeah. a goal, you'll be happy. And then you're like, oh, what's the next goal, right? Because we'll, catch them all, man. There's so much. <laughs> there's but so no, much. it's not necessarily an addiction because it's fun too. You're like, I had so oh, much yeah. fun like completing this set or going after this card and getting a good deal on it. Like I, I want to keep the fun going. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I want, and it's fun to do it with a bunch of people, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, I, I find, I love that the prices are going up, not just because I have the cards, but because it's exciting that lots and lots of people love what I love. And, and you're one of those rare people where I don't yeah. even know if the price is going up is ultimately going to impact you financially. Cause you're just like, I never want to sell these things. I want to keep yeah. them forever. There are a lot of them that I would never want to sell. It would take a huge price for me to sell them. Uh, because that would be, you know, the new established price. And if I ever wanted it back, I'd have to buy it at that price, theoretically. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I do sell quite a bit, but I generally reinvest that money back in. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I tend to sell things that I think are over, overvalued. So, so my general thing is I'm trying to buy things that I think are undervalued right now or slightly undervalued, but I'm buying very slowly. And I'm definitely avoiding a lot of these when all of this rise was happening, I actually quickly went in and I bought out like all of the PSA 9 first edition WotC, all of the PSA 10 first edition WotC cards that seemed like they had been at that price for a long time. So I doubled and tripled up and quadrupled up in some cases on some of the inventory I, I have. Um, get a little inside of specifics of what I'm doing of what I did because I saw this price move coming and I might slowly sell some of those to people. Um, uh, but I'm not buying now. I'm not buying those Watsi first editions now at these, at these huge price ranges. I mean, things on, so PWCC auctions are, is a monthly auction where you have a lot of cards being sold based on, through eBay. You can look this up on eBay. And, you know, I, I, I can't believe some of these prices are real. These might be shill bidding. You know, I look, I look at the, at the um, the bids and try and see is it the same people bidding or do they only bid on these things? How many retracted offers do they? You know these are the sort of the, the the tricks on on eBay if people aren't aware to 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 figure out what's going on, but it can be hard to know. Um, but you know I bought you know uh, some of these cards at fifty seventy five dollars a year and a half two years ago that are now going for. Um, latest 1200 in this auction and it's just crazy you know i can I, i'm not going to talk about the specific cards because i don't want to uh 
Well, maybe, maybe at some point, individuals maybe, or, or maybe one day you will be you will be the big name in the business, and we'll put in. we'll put your specific tips and and predictions behind a paywall. Um, yeah, but yeah. speaking of eBay tips, I'll give I'll give one tip that I use um, <laughs> very here later in the video for those who are still with us. Yeah. That um, you know when when someone has a or best offer option. Um, and the item sells, you can see in the sold listings that it was sold for the best offer. It'll like cross out the price and say best offer price accepted. But then you don't really know how much it's sold for. So if there's if there are cards that you're tracking, what I always do is I put in offers for, for those cards uh, because then eBay will notify you by email when it sells and tell you how much it's sold for. It'll say, you missed out on this item, it sold for XX dollars. And so I'll put in tiny offers and I'll, I'll, I'll write to the seller and be like, this is a serious offer, I just wanna put something in there so I get notified when this sells. Um, and that way I get those emails and I know what the actual sold price was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll give a, I'll give a short prediction and then, and then we'll move on. So I guess my yeah, prediction is, I guess I never really finished my exact prediction at the end. Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. What is it? Rambling. I apologize. Let me, let me, uh, just finish so that I actually yeah. answer your question. I don't give a politician's answer where I move around <laughs> it. Um, uh, so the real answer to the question is, yeah, um, I, I think that that I, I do think there's going to be a retrace from these prices, but but where that point is, nobody knows. So the prices may go up an additional huge amount. Now it's it's going to be totally different on each card, and frankly, you know, if I talk to you individually, I could give you exact advice on each card and what I think specifically each card is going to do based on the population report, based on the price history, based on the fact that I think this card is undervalued or underknown. There isn't enough hype around it. A lot of these vintage Japanese, you see these Misaki promos, for example, play promos, these types of cards um, have really gone up a lot recently. And now there's a lot of new hype and, and interest in these cards because they're extremely rare. They're extremely scarce. And, and, uh, um, and so with any individual card, there are, there are going to be deals. There are going to be things to buy, but overall, I think you're going to see a retrace. And what a retrace is, is we're going to see, we're going to see these record high prices that are going to keep happening to a certain extent. And then we're probably going to see a two year retrace where prices are going to, some of the mo the most ridiculous high prices in Watsi are going to actually go down maybe a fourth to a half, I would say. Wow. It, you know, the, these huge prices people are, are paying. I think most of it, it'll probably just retrace five to 10%, just like we had actually in some of the, the Pokemon Go bubble that people talk about in the hobby, you saw some retracing on things. You saw like retracing on some of the, the gold stars. You saw retracing on some of the crystal cards. Um, the, the, one of the big examples is the crystal Charizard. The crystal Charizard was selling at one point for around $4,000 in wow. like 2018. Then it retraced to about $2,500. I'm just going to get a picture of that. Now it's probably back up to $6,000, $7,000, $8,000 for that card. Given, given the price, the price of everything else. So this is the EX Crystal Guardian. So we're looking for the Crystal One from Sky Ridge. This one. Yeah. So this card, for example. So are there first you, editions of these, or it's all non-first edition? All non-first edition in English. So Interesting. PSA9, it's like almost as good as you can get. Added yeah. first edition. <laughs> this card just is so amazing. I love it. That's so a much. beautiful card. So, um, so. I bought to toot my own horn for a second. I bought one of those cards at sort of that lower price because I had a feeling that everything was going to be. How much was that? Me. I bought my PSA 10 for about $2,700. PSA 10? Okay. PSA 10 for 2700 wow. And that at the time was higher. I could have actually gotten it lower. I, I actually, they were selling for, you know, we can look at Pokemon price, but my memory says they were selling at about, you know, 2200 2300 PSA 10. And now they jumped up to that. Um, you know, I, I think that the one thing that will protect these cards from not retracing is that the low population. So some of these cards have such low population at the end of the day, as S and Pratt says, if people know Scott, Scott Pratt's great channel, um, you know, show me the, the cheaper option is basically something I'm paraphrasing him. But that's something what he says. And that's very true. What is the cheaper option when there are only 10 blissies? There are, there, yeah. you know, one of those people need to sell. You know, and, so, and obviously like the gold standard in general is to look at yeah. sold listings, you know, how much people actually are willing to spend. But for yeah. some cards that are so rare, it's not helpful because if there's only one of them currently listed, that is the price, right? Yeah. Like, 
you know, and, and it's very rare for people to undercut each other a lot because you're like, why would I undercut this person by more than like $10 if I can, if I can make almost as much as they're making. Yeah. And I'm invested in all of these sets and I collect all of these sets. So I'm not picking any favorites here, but there are certain sets like team rocket, for example, I'm going to hate on team rocket a little bit. I love team rocket. I'm heavily invested. So I'm hurting myself by saying things like this, but team rocket has a lot more in the pot. Jim Challenge has a lot more in the pocket. Let me, let me pull up the... These are two of my very favorite sets. I'm heavily collected. I love Jim Challenge, them. too. Let's pull that one up. I, you know, I, I'm always going to own these cards and love these cards. But, yeah, if you want to look at, at... So, a few of these hollows. So, for example, like the Persian, the um, Beedrill, uh, those are actually low pop. They're very hard to grade. So hmm. if you see 51 to 278, so 51 in gym challenge is extremely low. Whereas in hmm. Neo Rev and some of those Neo sets, 50 is on the higher end of what, yeah. This one is here, like more than twice as much. 128, a lot of them are like that. A lot of them actually have about the same amount of PSA 10s as PSA 9s, which just means that fresh out of pack, they, 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 they tend to grade at a gem mint 10 a lot higher, 181 to 238. Mm. So this card, for example, you can see price history down here. You can see they did get, they did not have one of the new price points. Oh, they got it. Yeah. So you can <laughs> Up see, there, that's um, crazy. So everything like that is happening. Right, right. Um, um, all these cards are experiencing that type of jump, by the yeah. way, almost all of them. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, 180 of those, 181 or whatever it was of those, versus 10 versus of some of these cards so there's just a lot more supply now it's all about supply and demand if there are thousands of people looking for those cards 200 is nothing you know it's yeah. it the, the price will continue to go up and if more and more people flood the price will continue to go up but again it's it's all about that supply and demand you're, you're a lot more protected so i always recommend looking at pop reports when you're thinking about buying pokemon so things to think about are the popularity of the pokemon um the the price of the pack of the of the of the sealed product to know how much it costs for people to get more of these to grade more of these for the population to go up um and then the pop report are three great indicators you know of the value of the card particularly these english cards um so so that's my overall prediction so i, I cut you off before Rocky, so please <laughs> sorry for yeah. that so long hope it was interesting and useful but <laughs> yeah I, I find it super valuable um now, I, I don't have like that kind of detailed knowledge that you do. I mean, for me, it, a lot of it's just tied to like macroeconomic trends that we can't really predict. But I just think that if, if the recession does like really start to hit hard and people start to feel it, you're going to see people like fire selling collections. And at first, these might not be PSA graded cards. These are people who are just like holding onto their Pokemon cards. They found them or they started to get back into it. And now they're getting out of it really quickly. Um, but over time, that trend leads to prices going down because then people buy the collections, then they get those cards graded. There's either more of them or they're buying graded cards and they're selling them. So there's more on the market mm -hmm. either way. Um, and eventually prices trend down again. So I, I don't think it's going to last. I think you know, like your insights mm -hmm. about why Pokemon is in it for the long term, I think are still going to hold true. They're going to weather all these, you know, relatively uh, mm -hmm. small storms when it comes to the, the long time horizon. Um, but for me personally, I'm kind of holding on to my cash. Now I'm actually selling like as much as I can sell um, yeah. and then just holding my cash for when, when that storm hits and I can just like buy collections. I find it more fun to just buy lots of cards and like kind of see what yeah. you're going to get as like a lottery and, and once in a while you get something that's like gradable or, or that's valuable. Yeah, I think, you know, you make, you make some good points. You know, I think, I think uh, one thing I got from what you were saying, which I think is true, is you actually might see a lot more ungraded and people people's childhood cards coming out because people need money they're not necessarily that engaged in the hobby they're not the ones currently buying right now they find these they see they're valuable and they start selling those collections you may start seeing some of that how many of those cards are going to be first edition and in, in right edition? exactly not many like your your collection from childhood i think is pretty rare first of all you did an amazing job keeping the cards in like pristine condition but you had good cards like for me like I was really into Pokemon, but I was what, like nine or 10 years old. Like we had relatively crappy stuff. We had like a few good hollows, right? That Raikou was probably the most valuable thing I had. And, and it's a miracle it came back at nine, right? So like, I think most people hear this and they dig out their old collection. Like it's really worth like, like so much less than you think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think people might be like right now, you might have, you know, going back to that flipper collector investor thing, you might have people trying to flip right now because they don't have income right now. 
And so they're looking to eBay to make money and they see this market as being really hot. So they're trying to buy and then flip these cards and are, are actually creating hype around these cards mm. and excitement and, and um, uh, you know, so that might be part of it too, which is, and it's, it's not real. It's not in, in that case, it's, um, it is real, but it's, it's not um, necessarily a long-term pattern that you're going to see. It's not necessarily a flood of new people. It's, it's just new prices. And, and so um, it won't keep growing at that rate yeah. in that case, unless they keep flipping and people keep buying, you know? Yeah. Um, I think your point too of that, you know, I think that there are a lot of people right now who they got the stimulus check. There are also a lot of people who are still working during in this economy, but are actually getting paid, but they're not actually going into work or they're not doing as much work. Right. right? They're, they're working from home. Maybe they're working less hours or they're, they're not working almost at all, but they're still getting paid from their job temporarily. And then the hope is they go back. So people are actually seeing, some people are seeing an increase in income because they're not spending money on movies, on food as much, on alcohol, on, you know, going out to restaurants. And a number of those people might actually have more money now, even though, you know, how long that will last, we don't know. I mean, yeah, you know, with the economy. Um, uh, so I think there's that, that kind of piece. There are a lot of nuances to this and there are a lot of different Possible yeah, Let, let's let's leave some mystery for next time. So I, I want to to wrap up with some fun segments, but but just to give a preview of, of like what we want to talk about in the future, right? Like, what could make this whole entire the entire Pokemon world collapse? I think that's an interesting theory to discuss. Um, and then getting into the details of like why grade with PSA? Should you buy sealed product or singles? Invest in vintage or modern? Um, Japanese versus English cards? PSA nines versus tens? That's a big one for me. I, I don't understand all the hype around tens. Like I'm fine with something that just looks nice. Um, Anyway, but hopefully we can do a lot more of these and get into that. And as part of that, I was hoping that we can do a couple of fun segments at the end each time. So one that I want to play, I'm calling it, um, should I buy this? And this is me asking Jake if I should buy something. So okay. I have, um, I've wanted to own a base set Charizard for a long time. For me, my sort of like minimum threshold is a PSA 8, because I have like a PSA 7 that just looks gross, right? Like, like the corn, like the, the, the top edge is all like crinkled and there's scratches on the hollow. So I think if I got a PSA Eight, it would look nice. So I just want like a base set Charizard. I don't want obviously first edition too expensive. So I'm going to take out those search terms and I'll say like, I want a PSA eight. I think I found a couple of contenders here. This one's still seven days left in the option. So who knows what's going to happen. Um, and, and I don't want Japanese either. I'll take out that search term. And I don't want base set two. I don't know how to take that one out. Um, but let's let's just take this as an example, right? So this is going for 380, but I can make an offer. I could get in the other option. How much would you pay for a PSA eight base set Charizard right now? So um, can I make a couple comments, or should I yeah. just name the price? Um, first name the price, then make some comments. First name the price. Okay. Um, gosh. So. <laughs> uh how much would i pay <laughs> or how much do i think you should pay because you want the card <laughs> if i want the card right if like you want the card right now if you really want it i think i think the going price right now and we can we can check the sold listings i don't follow this card too specifically but you know it's been creeping up in price for for a while probably around the 280 to 300 mark i saw some sold listing around there although now you see this auction you know for 350 on april 19th although this is, and this is the craziness of the market right now. An auction on that day went for 350 and then a best offer went for 320. We were talking about this. It's like some people bid higher <laughs> on auctions and they could just like currently buy cards, sometimes even from the same seller. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't know if this is a, you know, shill bid. We could look at the bidding and we could go into and we see it's all one person bidding or they're on their own card yeah. to sell another card or whatever. You know, I don't think that that, that happens that much. I, I think it does happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, uh, you know, if you want to look at the pop report on base set Charizard, you're going to see a million base set Charizards, you know, thousands and thousands of these cards. So it's, it's a, it's a really good, a lot of people talk about it as a good um, sort of blue chip thing in, 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 in the Pokemon world. It's, it's Charizard, it's base set. Everyone who at my age loves, you know, was so excited to pull that from a pack. Many of us didn't pull it from a pack and have, have wanted it. Exactly. People want, want that card. It's an awesome looking card. I love that card. Love seeing that card. Um, 
it's also probably the most bought and sold card, I would venture a guess, uh, with not knowing that for sure, that Charizard base set non-first edition non-shadowless is the most sold card and continuously it's very liquid. Um, and so it's, you can always buy that card, probably at least for now, <laughs> if, the, if the hobby gets, if you can't buy that card, then we've, we're really in a good place in the hobby. <laughs> in terms of, in yeah. Terms of a lot of people, yeah. um, you know, at any condition, I mean, um, if you can't buy that card, so you can, you can, it's, it's readily available. There are constantly lots and lots of them on eBay, but that card too continues to go up in price. People love it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm probably gonna hold on it for now. I'm also gonna hold to my sworn duty to keep us moving because you could talk. I mean, it's like you know so much about like almost every card. We're gonna have to go into more detail okay. sometime. Um, but I wanted to maybe show off like a little bit of your collection. So I was thinking we could each pick out like one or two cards and show them and tell the story behind them. Um, do you want me to give you? I'll give you a minute to go get yours because mine are handy over here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll be back in one second too. So there's a set that I love. Um, in general, I'm not like a huge fan of the Japanese cards when there is an English version of the same thing available, you know, because I was collecting English as a kid. But I love some of the sets where they were in Japanese only. And one of those sets is um, the Versus set where they, they had like trainer owned Pokemon um, again. And so in that Versus set with a trainer owned Pokemon, one of my favorite trainers is Karen. Um, and so let me see if you can see this with the camera. I might have to take out my virtual background from Zoom. And you're gonna see my ugly background over here. Um, there we go. So there we go. This is a PSA 9 of Karen's Tyranitar from that Japanese verse set. Um, I don't think my, my camera quality is good enough to pick up how amazing this card is. But I remember when I was like phasing out of Pokemon, this set had just come out and they were selling some packs of it in American stores. And I bought like one pack and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then when I rediscovered Pokemon, I was like, holy moly, the prices on these are just crazy. But I thought it'd be also cool to collect the, the three legendary dogs from the set. So I have the PSA 9 of the Rockets Entei here. There we go. Um, and Rockets Raikou and where's the last one? the Suicune too. Um, I love, I love legendary dogs. So, I, and one more thing I just want to show before Jake was this example of PSA 7s. So I bought this, um, I got a pretty good deal on this PSA 7 Lugia from base, from uh, the Neo Genesis set, the first Neo set. I love this card so much. I have another one in, in PSA 9. Um, and I was like, I, you know, 7's probably good enough for me. Maybe I'll sell the 9 that I have. But like, I don't know if you can see this on the top, the top edge, is like very whitened. It isn't showing up as much on camera. And then you probably no way you'll be able to see this, but the hollow pattern is like pretty scratched, not just on the case, but on the card itself. Is that common that like on a PSA 7, there'll be that many scratches on the hollow? Um, so yeah, they, they grade on it on, on a few different uh, things. So um, it really depends on how strong it is in the other categories, basically. So if there's very little whitening on the back, for example, it, the card is very well centered, which means that it has an equal sort of border around the front and the back. Um, and the, the edges are very clean. If there's a scratch on the hollow, it could get, or a few scratches on the hollow, as long as they're not that deep, you could get a seven. Generally, scratches on the hollow are really bad. Yeah. Generally, generally, from my experience grading, I've probably graded uh, probably a thousand cards or so. Um, the the scratches on the hollows can really take down a card. Um, these hollow cards, and it's it's generally better. Some of these other categories, for me overall, they've been a bit more comparatively lenient on. But I mean, nobody know. Like, it really, it's it's like I I'm surprised every time I get uh, stuff back from PSA. I have cards that I'm like, yes, like, oh my god, I was not expecting a ten on that. That's awesome. And then I have cards that are frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and show, so show me show me what you got. So I teased this earlier, so I'm going to show it um, in case people were wanting to see it. So this is. Uh... Yeah, I got it. 
Got it. So this is um, uh, that tropical wind card I was talking about um, from the tropical metal me uh, mega battle in 1999. Um, uh, historic card um, from the first. I I love the the um, I love the art, honestly. I love the the old feel, the old back Japanese. Um, uh, the scarcity, the rarity, the history in terms of it being from that first tournament, like all of that stuff as a collector um, makes it for me like such such a great choice, such a great card to collect. I also love, I can show a few more. I love these, um, this one is actually from 2019. I love um, all of these world champion cards and really the first one was this this world's promo here what year is that from this this new one this oh, is the older the first world's promo oh that was that tropical wind card yeah from what year so that one's from 1999 so they oh. have one every year almost every year a couple years they didn't have it um from 1999 on until this year, which they will not have it because of the coronavirus, there will there will be no world's cards, so they'll they'll they're postponing. So these cards are given out at the world championship, um, and uh, like this one is given out to all the quarter finalist participants. Mm -hmm. You can see it says stamped quarter finalist. I have like a top sixteen one here. I have top thirty two. There there are a lot of different. Um, and these are all from different years. Does it make you want to get back into the game so you can like earn those cards in a tournament? You know, I just, I, I, we, we didn't talk about this, but I never, I was never that interested in playing. I played like a little bit and I actually love games. You and I both love games. We play lots of games together, but um, I always like Magic the Gathering. Like, I like that game. Yeah, I think it's a better game. But I did get back into Pokemon a couple of years ago. Like, the current metagame for the current cards, it's pretty good. Like, like they've actually done a good job of, like, improving over the last, you know, 20-something years. Yeah, I have not played a lot of the modern. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I guess I'll also show in the stack I just picked up. I have some. Um, these cards are really cool. I'll just show one. Uh, um, I like the art on this one um, card right here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these Art Academy cards. No, tell me. But uh, they, so these were designed by like Pokemon fans, Pokemon artist fans. And that's part of why I love them. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's cool that, that Pokemon does things like this. And so um, it says, and it says the illustrator on here, uh, Pigure, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, his name correctly. Um, and um, yeah, these cards have a hundred copies in existence each. Um, and they were given actually out to the winner, uh, to the person who illustrated it, got all of them and then sold oh, nice. them to the community. Now there's some of them, there have been extra copies that have showed up on the market, which is an issue in, in Pokemon. And so they're there are some copies that people were able to get that weren't sold by the original artist. Um, but, um, but yeah, I love this card. And then I can show other times some of my cards from when I was a kid. And yeah, like I would never sell the cards. That'd like be I great. We, we have so much to do next time, right? So we want to get to those other topics. Yeah. Want to show off more of Jake's collection and, and just how much knowledge he has. Um, and also like take questions from people. I think, you know, one of the reasons we want to, to do this and hopefully do more of these is there's so much hype and, and as a result, so much misinformation that's out there and just help give people like real data or at least tell them how to find the real data so they can make the right decisions for themselves and not get sucked into that misinformation. Um, it's pretty important. So we'll, we'll do more of these. This was yeah, super I fun. I want people to have good experiences and not get scammed. Like I, yeah. I watched these, all these sorts of raffles and these streams recently where people are spending so much money on things that have such little value. And, and uh, I want people to be in this hobby for a long time and invest in stuff that is worth investing in. And it's really, it's good for all of us. It's good for, for, the, for the health of the collecting community as a whole and I'd like to collect the stuff like my whole life off and on so I, I just want I want people to uh, to know what they're doing and and enjoy and get some value back and not feel ripped off um, and those sorts of things because so that's terrible and there is 
unfortunately there is there is quite a bit of that on some of the the fringe parts of pokemon so yeah yeah um and i guess the last question is should we be embarrassed posting this video is is two two grown adults me i, I have kids too talking about pokemon i think i mean my answer is jake has convinced me no to come out of my shell like this is this is art right i think especially in the you know as our generation gets older like pop culture and and these big media franchises that we saw in those infographics like these are, are pieces of history and, and pieces of art and that's why people like to collect them because they bring people aesthetic value they bring people nostalgia um they have they have like financial worth it's kind of all the things that make something enriching and then sort of add to someone's life and i, I don't i guess i don't think there should be any shame in, in trying to like share that and, and it show off to people like how much pleasure it brings you too yeah i mean life is the the you know the short answer is life is too short to to really worry too much about um you know people criticizing you for something that you really enjoy and really love would be would be the first advice i would give anyone and um the really good news is lots of people really enjoy this and love this at all sorts of ages including kids it's a cool thing to collect with your kids honestly i know you have Kids. You know, I, can't, I, I can't wait till they're old enough to, I know, to get I know, into it. Yeah. yeah. So um like I my girlfriend and, and Rafi's wife, um, I'm not sure they <laughs> they love our our intense interest in this and they don't definitely don't understand it. At least my girlfriend doesn't doesn't understand it, but um but is supportive of it and um does love that 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 I'm happy with it. Yeah. So there are plenty of people, you know, including girlfriend and wife who are like, what but, but very supportive. Actually, what it's funny because I told Ron, what is this piece of cardboard and why yeah. is it any value at all? To but any? you can say the same thing about a painting, too. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. um, I'm way more into the, the Star Wars CCG than I am the, the Pokemon TCG. But I was, telling, I was telling my wife the other day, I was like, did you know I've spent um, over $6,000 on Star Wars? Kind of to try to shock her. I was like, but I've made almost $7,000. So, like, I'm net positive, like, almost $1,000 on all my, like, buying and selling it. And I've invested, you know, I've built up a collection from that, too. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just funny, it's like, for people who, who aren't into this to see sort of the volume of money that gets, that gets transacted, like, overall. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Jake. You're welcome. Thank you. Hopefully see you Sounds soon in good. person, but otherwise we'll do another Zoom call. Sounds good, man. All right. Take care. You too.